Well, this is it. The start of the last journey. Got Hoorah. anything to say before I go? Don't die. Don't die? Wow, <laughs> thanks. Great advice. Awesome. The guy saying, oh, they pulled somebody out last year. That, yeah, that gives me a vote of confidence. Got my kayak. Ma's going with me for a little while. Admittedly, I had never been inside of a kayak for more than an hour, and the few instances that I had were in a cheap recreational kayak we bought at a sporting goods store. But when it came to kayak touring across the entire state of New York, I had as close to zero experience as you could possibly get. I was certainly happy that the most difficult part of the trip would be finished first. High winds and choppy waters made the Niagara River frustratingly difficult and sometimes dangerous to navigate, but we slowly made our way to the mouth of the canal located in Tonawanda. Ooh, that's rough down. It's quarter after six, the 30th of August. We're here in Amherst Veterans Memorial Park. They actually gave us permission to camp here overnight, which is really, really sweet of them. I'm gonna make some coffee, get some food in me. There's a whole bunch of kids over here from like the rowing class. I don't remember what school this is for. I think it's for UB. Cops came last night, wanted to know if we were okay. We told them that the town gave us permission and they just, they left us alone. He came back later to make sure he got the information right. It's like, come on, dude, we just want to sleep. It rained really hard last night, so it was, it was poor sleep. Onward we go. Okay, beginning of the second day. I have no idea how far we'll go because I've, I just don't know how far we'll go. God, that's good. That never gets old. <sighs> Stopped off here. We are outside of Gasport, this old marina that doesn't look like it's been used in a very long time. I'm trying to find as much shelter from the sun because a good chunk of my legs are burned because I decided I wasn't going to put my skirt on. Yeah, it wasn't a good idea. It's hard filming and experiencing this at the same time. It feels odd because it's like I want to capture this and I want to do it justice, but it's not as easy as like the hike or the bike. On the bike, I could put the camera anywhere I want, or on the hike, I could set it on the ground and walk away and get kind of cool shots. You know, I can't do that on a boat. Today we're doing 25, 26-ish miles. Yesterday we did 27. The sails work remarkably well, which thank God for that, because I spent good time on these things. I was hoping they would work and they do. While I'm excited to be out here and I'm excited for the triple to be finished, I'm also afraid of how I'm going to feel when it's finished because this is what I've been doing for the last two years. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Pretty nice morning. <sighs> Making some coffee. I can carry all this stuff and not have to worry about weight anymore, so I can kind of take my time with it and make coffee. This recipe is actually on Aria's website. It's coconut chocolate granola with some freeze dried fruit and powdered milk, and it's really good. 
Oh god, it's good. I'm going to uh, turn off the camera and then enjoy me some coffee. By the third day, we started to get used to the morning routine of getting up and packing our kayaks, and our body slowly began to adjust to the long hours of sitting and paddling. We quickly realized the value of having the day's needs on hand so we could spend less time stopped and out of our kayaks and more time to enjoy the view. There was a pleasant sense of comfort on our way to Rochester as we began passing by familiar places. Either spots that I had previously spent the night at, or landmarks unique to each town and their relationship to the Erie Canal. So we are here uh, at lock 33. We got here last night, but it was too late. Uh, it was too late for us to get through because apparently um, lock 33 closes earlier and lock 32 stays open later for commercial craft. So, yep. Only 31 left to go. Just got off the phone with uh, John, real nice guy. He's talking about me on the podcast with him and his uh, him and his buddies. And he asked me because he's preparing to come out here and do the canal. And he was asking questions like, should I do a canoe or a kayak? Uh, what are you doing for camping? Like, where are you staying? What about food? One of the questions he asked is like. Like, why is, why is the canal difficult? And I gave him the answer that I give most people. This doesn't have towns that are set up for people to paddle it or to even through hike it. Biking it is the big thing, you know. There's plenty of stuff along the canal to accommodate cyclists. Hundreds, thousands of people every year uh, through bike the canal. Several hundred people, I would imagine, each year paddle the canal. And then there's myself and like three or four other people who have ever through hiked it and it's difficult in the ways that you wouldn't expect towns aren't set up for that you know there are no lean-tos there are no places designated for you to be able to stay you are within town limits constantly and so it's it's one of these things of like trying to juggle getting food you know filter your water where am I gonna stay each night? Can I get through this town? Can I get to that town? Is this going to be open at this place or whatever? It's tough. So, it'll be nice to, uh, it'll be nice to get this done. And I'm enjoying it though. We just stopped in Pittsford and got Sundays uh, and some baked goods from Pittsford Dairy, because why not? It's just one of those things. I've spent the last two years working up to this. Oh my god. Even though I had visited many of these places before, the canal seemed completely different this time, which was something that caught me entirely by surprise.
I was amazed how such a slight change of perspective could rewrite the entire experience of this journey. Just for Or how it could make something so familiar feel so foreign, as if I was discovering all of this for the first time. Here, get in here. Grandpaps came out to see us. Hello, world. Hello, world. <laughs> so we're staying in Lions right now. Really nice sunset going on with the clouds. The lock we came through is just over here. We're actually just staying down here with our tents and everything like that. It's really nice. Guy came and talked to us. The volunteer fire department up there has a camping spot for tents and they have a bathroom and showers available for folks coming through so gonna hang out eat some food talk for a little while pitch tent and probably pass out <laughs> you got anything to say yeah the erie canal down here we did this for a senior class project we dug this whole canal from buffalo to albany in my senior year of high school you're not that old <laughs> oh my god <laughs> mother here now fully understands why my trail name is choo choo and why that train sound haunts me everywhere i go That's why my trail name is Choo Choo. It's bad. It's really it's bad. all night long. <laughs> all night long. It's relentless. Oh my god, yeah. It's rough. This is one of the first spots that like, you could hear it consistently from where you're sleeping, so. Uh, and we're gonna push onward to Clyde. It's supposed to get kind of hot out today. There's absolutely no wind. Playing around with the camera, trying to get like different angles and stuff like that. It's been really difficult trying to get footage. Maybe I'm just not in the right mindset. This thing has like a storage container on it. It has like tents pitched on it. pushing it. So they're pushing it with these end boats here. Good lord. Good god. We really couldn't have asked for better paddling conditions. The skies were completely clear, the forecast looked pristine, and we were enjoying all of the little places that we found along the way. There was also a massive variety of wildlife to see along the shores of the canal, including dozens of bald eagles and countless numbers of blue herons. I now understand why B.S. Bob back in Lyons called this place Mosquito heaven. I'm trying desperately not to stop paddling, even though I'm very tired, because they just keep following me. These little buggers are ridiculous. It's been a really rough night. Mosquitoes, I just get eaten alive. Sawyer, if you're watching this, thank you for that bottle of bug spray, because that really helped. There's not a lot between here and Baldwinsville and it's supposed to rain pretty much all day, so you're going inside the waterproof case and you're gonna have bad audio. Have some breakfast and just start paddling. So yeah.
going to be rough. Wake up. I can only describe our trip through Montezuma as a glimpse into absolute hell. Mosquitoes by the millions would swarm us the minute we got out of our kayaks, biting away at any amount of bare skin available. So we continued paddling long into the night, searching for a place far, far away from all of those mosquitoes. I just started the cross of Oneida Lake like 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. This is a lot of open water. This is more open water than I've ever done before. So I started at the crack of dawn to give me the best shot of getting there with minimal boat traffic on the lake. First chunk of the trip that I'm paddling by myself, so <laughs> talking to the camera is really what I've got. I was really nervous for the long crossing of Oneida Lake. It's a 21 mile stretch of open water, the largest lake crossing of the entire trip. I was hoping for minimal traffic, the lack of boaters, and the long expanse of open water brought a weird sense of loneliness and isolation. It made me think about those who traveled the canal almost 200 years ago, and I'd like to think that some of them were like me, far from home in search of adventure. Another really rough night. The mosquitoes again. <laughs> I'm having like I'm having like PTSD from mosquito bites at this point. Rome is just up there. I'm gonna get out, have some proper breakfast, and not get eaten alive. I just wanted to get in the kayak and go in because for whatever reason the mosquitoes don't follow me out here on the water. So there's supposed to be a really good wind today, which is awesome. So I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping I'll have an easy go of it today. Get some miles done, so let's do it. The trip from Rome to Herkimer was one of my favorite. I had a 15 mile an hour tailwind that pushed me along faster than I could paddle. The short day was made even better with the promise of hot food and a shower. famous town on the canal is Little Falls, known for its steep cliffs and the largest lock on the Erie Canal, Lock 17, with a 40-foot drop.
my knees hurt, my bum hurts. I'm ready to be done. I'm just... There's supposed to be a tail breeze pretty much all of today. Every weather channel and app that I search for, it says, oh yeah, it's going, it's heading towards the east from the west, and it's the exact opposite in reality. I just... Tomorrow, though, I definitely will have a good tail breeze because there'll be a thunder and lightning storm going through in the later half of the day. So I'm not not really happy either way. A good day, I'm supposed to have a tail breeze. I don't get it. And then the day I do get a tail breeze, it's supposed to just pour on me all day. I just want to get through the next two locks if I can. I'm hoping I can. But I don't know. We'll see. By the time I left Little Falls, I was hardwired for the days ahead. The miles became easier to the point where I would paddle for 12 or 13 miles without resting. I felt like a true voyager, pressing head-on into an unfamiliar place. Just to feel alive again Pushing forward through the night Aching just to lower aside It's so far, so far away It's so far, so far Lock 13 was truly momentous. Having finally hit the 300 mile mark, the locks quickly got closer together as I neared Albany. Cold wind blows into the skin. Can't believe the state you're in. It's so far, so far away. It's so far. Nosebleed. I shoved a tissue up in it so I could get going. It's not supposed to rain anymore, so I'll probably take the waterproof case off for the sake of my audio. I don't know, I'm pretty tired. Read something on Facebook about a guy who's going to start on the 20th of this month to through suck the canal. And everyone's like, you realize the canal closes mid-October, right? Have you ever been in upstate New York during October? A couple of these past mornings, it's been like 40 degrees. But it's nice to get in the kayak, because then the skirt helps kind of keep me warm. I'm going to keep going. I got lock nine coming up. I'm going to see if the guys are still there from, uh, from when I threw hiked it. So I can say hi and maybe buy him a Coke or something. I don't know. We'll see. With clear skies, a steady tailwind, and high spirits, I sailed through my last full day on the canal.
You know, I'm sitting here thinking about this whole trip. You know, the last two years of work I've, I've put into this, trying to do the triple. And um, I'm excited to get it done. I mean, who wouldn't be? But almost feels kind of wrong in a way. Like, there's a part of me that doesn't that doesn't want to finish to keep this like a fresh experience, keep this something that is still there. You know, one of the reasons I started doing this was because nobody had done it before, you know. And I've probably, I've mentioned it a thousand times over, you know, growing up in outdoors and stuff and you hear people of doing, you, you know, you read about people doing things like fastest known times and first ascents and first attempts and I just didn't feel like there was much special anymore, you know. Felt like everything had already been done. And yet this, this hasn't. But it feels wrong to take it, you know? It feels wrong to have an idea of something that has not yet been touched and to just take it for yourself. Maybe not for myself, maybe that's a little too selfish. But you know what I mean, I mean, It just kind of feels wrong in a small sense. Maybe that's just me. But it's been a long two years. I've been through a lot of crap. And I've pushed myself harder than I ever have to finish this, especially the kayak portion. This has been the most difficult. I thought the through hike was bad. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It feels good to be doing it. It feels good to nearly have it done. I still can't shake the feeling that it kind of feels a little wrong. Might as well leave the camera rolling. I've got, you know, 50, 58% battery left and I only need it for like the next 10 minutes. So I'm in the last lock, I'm in the lock two. It seems like not all that long ago. I remember waiting to get through 35 and 34 in Lockport. It seems like not even all that long ago I had the idea of doing the triple to begin with. And I know I talk about it all the time and how hard it is and how oh, I just kind of want to shower and go home and sleep, but I can see the light through the doors now. It's good to have put, put my mind to something incredible and actually done it. And my heart is racing and it feels like it's going to burst out of my chest. Over here, get out into the Hudson, I guess. That's it. That's okay if it's not too late. The Hudson. On my way to the other side. Oh my. I cannot help but deny. That's okay if it's not too late. On my way to the other side. It's not too late and I'm on my way to the other side